All right, thanks, Ted, for being here. Why don't you explain to us what goes into the decision as to whether or not Sioux Valley uses an underground line or an overhead line? Um, there are multiple things that we look at, Carrie. The first of which probably is cost, and the uh, cost to build a, a underground system is up to triple what the cost of an overhead system is, so it can be significant. We also take into account the right-of-way. The type of right-of-way is in an urban environment. Um, the underground is accepted more readily in an urban environment. The overhead is more typically what we would try to do, what we're trying to do in a rural environment. We look at trees. Do we have tree problems where we're going to have to be trimming trees forever and that's something we're not going to want to be dealing with on an overhead line. We look into the acquisition of the right-of-way itself. Is it a big wide road ditch where we got plenty of room or is it a narrow road where we don't have a lot of room or can we get a private easement on the on the adjacent landowners which is what we'd like to do on all of it. That uh, helps us out also a lot. Right now, approximately how much overhead and underground do we have on the Sioux Valley system? We are just about 50-50. We have just a little bit more underground than we do overhead. We have about 3,000 miles of underground and about 2,900 miles of overhead line. How does that compare to other systems? We're a little higher on underground cable percentage than most typical systems in this region. Most of them haven't went after the large underground replacement like we have in Minnesota, for example, and they don't have the urban area where all they're putting in is underground, so they have a lot of older overhead lines that haven't been replaced since they were installed in the 30s, 40s, and 50s. Now when it comes to the operation of the system, are there any issues that arise if you have too much underground? There are. Um, it can cause some, some operational issues with just working on the system. The overhead system, you can fix what's wrong by seeing it. On the underground, you need specialized equipment and tools to work on it, to dig it up, to figure out what's going on. The people that are doing the work need to be more on their game. They need to be really aware of what's going on in an underground system so they don't make a mistake. The equipment that we need to be able to switch underground system to alternate feeds, them kind of thing, is very expensive, very highly technical that we need to use. All right. Thanks for joining us, Ted. Thank you.